Okay, here are a few selected answers from the chapter 10 book review. Uh, this is problem number five. Uh, what they gave you, and the key to the problem is, is recognizing that this circle has a radius of one. So they give you the location of this coordinate here where the x value is one. The key there being that you can draw a radius in any direction and that radius will have the same value. So the hypotenuse of this right triangle will have a value of one. They give you that this is 30 degrees, so opposite 30 is 1, opposite 90 is 2, opposite 60 is root 3. So to go from a length of 1 back to the side opposite 30, I divide by 2. To go from the 30 degree measure to the 60 degree side, we're going to multiply 1 half by root 3. When I go to write the coordinate, what's the change in x? What's the horizontal change? The horizontal change is root 3 over 2. What's the vertical change? The vertical change was one half. Question number six is a similar problem. What they give us here is that this central angle measures 225 degrees, which means that it goes 45 degrees past 180. Same setup, radius of one. We have a 45, 45, 90 degree uh, right triangle. So if this has a length of one, one divided by root two turns out to be two root two. So my values are going to be negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2 for the coordinates. Question number 13, they give you the area of the circle and they're asking for the area of the square. So if the area of the circle is 350 square centimeters, we know the formula is pi r squared. So if I'm going to solve for the radius, I'm going to divide both sides by pi and then undo squaring uh, the radius by taking the square root. That gets me a radius of approximately 10 and a half to turn that into the diameter, the diameter of the circle is roughly 21. Okay. As far as the picture goes, what do we know? Well, we know that this diagonal across the, the center of the, the square here has a length of 21. Again, we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So if I take the diagonal or the hypotenuse and I divide it by root 2, I get approximately 15. And then to get the area of the square, I take the side and square it and multiply by itself. So my solution is approximately 222 and 8 tenths square centimeters. Question number 12. So they give us a picture, and they're asking for the shaded region of this segment here combined with this segment here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find one segment at a time. So to get this segment here, what do I know? I know the diagonal has a length of 2 root 2. Again, this is a 45, 45, 90. If I divide by root 2, each side of the square has a length of 2. So I start by finding the area of the sector. So the sector represents 1 quarter of a, of a circle. So 1 fourth times pi times 2 squared turns out to be pi. Find the area of a triangle, base times height divided by 2, the area is 2. If I subtract those two values, I get the segment. You can see here in the diagram we have two segments. We have one on the, the top, we have one on the bottom. So if I take the area of one segment and multiply by two, I get the area of the shaded region, which is two pi minus four square centimeters. Uh, the last question was number 33. To complete the square, I take half of the linear coefficient. So half of 10 is five, five squared is 25. Whatever I do to one side, you gotta make sure to do to the other. Half of six is three, three squared is nine. What multiplies to 25 and adds to 10? We get positive 5 and positive 5. Multiplies to 9 adds to 6, positive 3, positive 3. Um, and so we end up with this equation here. When you find the center, the center is the opposite of what you see. So if we see positive 5, we're going to record negative 5. Positive 3, record negative 3. And again, this is, represents the radius squared. So if r squared is 4, then the radius then would be 10.